what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a horror film, Grave Encounters, Part 1. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The film begins with a television producer describing Grave Encounters. It is a paranormal reality television program, directed and hosted by a self-proclaimed paranormal investigator named Lance. He and his team of skilled paranormal investigators composed the program, which was canceled after only five episodes. The producer clarifies that what is about to be shown is not a movie, but raw footage from the sixth and final episode, only edited for time restraint purposes. The footage is 76 hours long, so they cut the unnecessary parts and only assembled the videos that really cover what happened in episode 6. The footage shows the crew of Grave Encounters composed of Lance, occult specialist Sasha, technical expert Matt, and the cameraman. The team is at the Collingwood Psychiatric Hospital, which accommodated over 80,000 mentally ill and disturbed individuals from 1895 to 1960. Lance and his team learn more about the institution's history with the help of the town's historian. The hospital was built in 1893 to address the growing overcrowding problem at the state hospital in the county. Mental illness was still a taboo topic, so instead of being a place to get help, the psychiatric hospital was seen as a dumping ground for embarrassing family members. The hospital staff, especially the lead doctor, treated the patients inhumanely. He was a Harvard-trained neurologist who was the head physician in the hospital. He performed unethical experiments and over 140 lobotomies until he was stabbed to death by six escaped patients. After his expertise, the team summons the hospital's caretaker. As they reach the front door, the camera captures the phrase, death awaits. The caretaker unchains the door and tours the team around the hospital, especially the notorious and most haunted rooms. They go to the window room, where the caretaker claims he locks them up at night, but when he comes back the following day, they are wide open. After that, they go to a patient's room, full of disturbing words written on the walls. The believed patient was in the room for a long time. The third place is the bathroom, where bathtubs are scattered in the middle of the room. The caretaker informs them that there was a little girl who slid her wrist in the bathtub. And for the last one, the caretaker takes them to the service tunnel, which connects all the buildings. Before proceeding to the next step, Lance interviews three more people, the former contractor, the gardener of the building, and a goth couple who fooled around in the hospital. Together with the psychic medium, the team voluntarily locks themselves in the hospital with the help of the caretaker, who chains the door. They set up cameras in every room and hallway, and set up a camp at the hospital's main entrance, waiting until the lockdown is over. For the first few hours, there are no paranormal activities, until a wheelchair moves by itself behind the cameraman who's roaming around the building. The cameraman does not notice this, as he's on the phone with his wife and child. However, he soon captures the door behind him slamming by itself. The cameraman immediately informs the team about this, and they record that there are no drafts and windows open that could have caused it to slam on its own. Because of this, Lance and his crew attempt to establish contact with the unseen entities and forces haunting the hospital, making the biggest mistake of their lives. An entity has thrown over a hospital bed, and then they hear heavy footsteps on the floor above them. Lance radios Matt, asking if there is someone on the floor above them. Matt informs them that there is no one upstairs, so Lance and the rest of the crew check out the floor. Sasha uses the EVP, a paranormal haunting device that captures sounds and noises which the human ear cannot hear. As they listen to the playback, a poltergeist holds up some of Sasha's hair, freaking them out. Sasha panics and wants to get out of the building as soon as possible, but Lance calms her down and points out to the team that, for the first time since they shot the show, they are finally in a real haunted place, which will make them famous in the television. The psychic takes Sasha downstairs to the main entrance and returns Lance and the cameraman to the haunted hallway. They again attempt to make contact with the unseen entity, asking it to reveal itself to them. However, whatever it is that frightens Sasha has gone. This pisses Lance, because he really thought that they were gonna capture more footage of the paranormal. The trio leaves the hallway to return to the main entrance, but somehow, they get lost. They radio Matt for directions, as he's in charge of watching them through the cameras, but they receive no answer. So left with no choice, the trio roams around the building. And fortunately, after arguing which way it is, they find their way to the main entrance. Within an hour left, before the caretaker comes to unlock the front doors, the team starts packing their stuff. Matt leaves them to retrieve the static cameras stationed throughout the building. He finds a window open when he reaches the window's room, so he immediately communicates with the crew through the walkie-talkie. However, they cannot hear him, and Matt follows the noises he heard, leading to his disappearance. 
This worries the rest of the crew, as Matt might be in danger. So although they do not want to search in pitch black, they must find him. They leave the psychic with the other equipment and search for Matt. They are not even that far when they find Matt's equipment scattered around the hallway. Lance takes Sasha with him and part ways with the cameraman so they can find Matt faster. During his search, an unseen force pushes the cameraman to the stairs. And fortunately, Lance and Sasha are not that far enough not to hear him. After hearing his screams, they immediately help him and take him back to the main entrance. The tension arises as these unseen forces get violent so Lance calls the caretaker, but there is no signal. Fed up by the recent events, the cameraman takes a hospital bed and attempts to knock down the front doors. At first, Lance does not want to help him, as they can be sued for damages, but the cameraman had enough. The caretaker is an hour late, and he was hurt by an unseen entity. So Lance helps the cameraman take down the front doors, only to discover that it leads to another corridor. This freaks them out even more, but they no longer want to be trapped in the haunted psychiatric hospital so they find more exit doors. However, all of them lead to another corridor, which means that they are trapped and there is no way for them to leave the place. It is now 8 in the morning, but it is still night outside when it should be daylight. They try to barge the windows, but they are shut tight. So left with no choice, the crew returns to the main entrance and lies down while thinking of a way to leave the building. As they lie on the cold floor, a poltergeist pushes down their light, breaking it into pieces. The only light they have now is from the cameras and flashlights. Lance shows the camera the maggots in their food, which was fresh and would take days to be rotten. Fortunately, they still have water to consume while trapped in the haunted psychiatric hospital. The cameraman informs them that he saw a fire escape outside before their investigation and proposes they go to the roof and use it to leave the premise. So they leave the main entrance and search for access to the roof only to find a wall blocking it. This agitates them even more and Sasha even begins to cry as she realizes their situation. The tension between the cameraman and the rest of the crew continues to arise, as they are all worried, agitated, terrified, and want to leave the building. While searching for the exit, the crew hears Matt screams, so they hurriedly follow his voice to a room. However, Matt is not there, and instead, they witness the unseen force move the hospital bed, like it is preparing to throw it at them. They quickly run away from that room, and fortunately, whatever it is in that room does not chase them. They rested for a while, and when they woke up, Sasha showed them the scratches on her back. The unseen entity strikes again and scratches the word hello on her back. They calm down Sasha, and Lance manages to contact Matt through the walkie-talkie. However, they quickly lose contact with him, so the crew continues the search. Not even long as they recontinue the search, the team encounters a patient wearing a hospital gown. She stands in the corner of the room, only in her underwear, and when she turns around, her face contorts demonically. The terrified crew immediately runs away from there and locks themselves in a closet. However, the psychic gets separated from them. He wanders the hospital grounds, looking for the crew in pitch darkness. Soon, he gets violently assaulted by an unseen force, who throws him from the middle of a corridor to the end. His head hits the cold ground hard, killing him. Meanwhile, after resting for a while, the crew finds hospital tags bearing their names on their wrists, like they have been admitted and have become patients of the psychiatric institution. They freak out as expected, but then gather themselves as they need to find the missing two men and an exit. For the third time, but unlike before, they see a hand holding Sasha's neck. Lance immediately removes the hand from her neck and drags her away. As they panic again, the crew finally finds Matt, who is wearing a hospital gown and has been driven insane. The crew talks to him, but Matt mumbles nonsense, uttering about his apparent psychological disorder, and explaining to them that the only way to leave the building is for them to get better at the hands of the hospital's unseen residents. These unseen forces continue to chase the crew throughout the hospital, using several apparitions like humongous and numerous arms coming out from the ceiling. A haunted ghost pulls the cameraman to a bathtub filled with blood, and when the crew flips the tub over, the cameraman has disappeared. Not long after that, a tumless demon attacks Sasha at Lance, possibly looking for a tum massage. And while they are fighting for their lives, Matt has a different plan. He takes a camera and records himself as he laughs maniacally before falling down the elevator shaft. As Matt falls to his death, the tumless demon disappears. The two mourn Matt's death for a while before entering the tunnel in search of another exit. They start to walk as the tunnel connects the building, but they have not hit a junction when they should have. The tunnel becomes an endless walkthrough, and they are still trapped. 
Negatively overwhelmed by emotions, Lance and Sasha sleep as she has been violently ill. While they are asleep, a mist suddenly comes out from nowhere. And when Lance wakes up, Sasha is gone. Lance does his best to find her, but he soon realizes it is pointless. Terrified, Lance continues through the tunnel alone, surviving by killing and eating rats. The recent terrifying events finally sink into him, making him insane. As he goes through the tunnel, Lance finds a door leading to the operating room that contains an altar and a pentagram for a demonic ritual. As he wanders the room, Lance sees an apparition of the doctor and several nurses, revealing that the doctor had used black magic for medical practice. The nurses drag a screaming and terrified Lance to the operating table. The camera blacks out for a while, and when it reopens, it shows a now lobotomized Lance. The film ends with Lance claiming that he is now allowed to go home. He signs off from being the host of Grave Encounters before shutting off the camera. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.